The blues has chords one, four and five in it. Now the blues is basically the origin of rock and pop as we know it. Everything stems from those three chords. Now armed with a keyboard and a guitar, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about those chords and how you can expand upon them based on just one scale. Let's have a look. As I said in the introduction, we have chords one, four, and five. Now on the other camera, which is looking over the piano, you can see that I've got chord one, chord four, and chord five. Now, the scale that these are built on is this. So there's those eight notes, when in fact there are seven different ones. So chord one, my thumb is on C. Chord four, I go up two, three, chord four, with my other two fingers in the same shape. And then chord five. On guitar, you have C, F, and G. Shake it up, baby, now shake it up, baby. Twist and shout, twist and shout. Etc. Etc. So you've got three chords and you can make a tune out of them. Great. Now, what we've got is in addition to these three major chords, are three minor ones. Now, these are still built on the same major scale. We've got chord two. So you can hear that minor tonality. It's a bit darker, it's a bit sadder. It's sunrise, sunset. Now, chord three is also a minor chord. And then chord six is a minor chord. So we've got six main chords. There are lots of other chords that you can use with this, but we'll just stick with these for now. Now, each of the major chords, C, F, and G, have what are called relative minor chords. So each minor chord has a relative major, each major has a relative minor, they're like cousins. So what we have is C major and A minor. They're a relative pair. Now, how is this relevant? Well, if I just hold a C chord on the piano, and play A minor on the guitar, you can hear that they work together quite nicely. It just makes that C major sound just a little bit more expensive. If I play C on both instruments, they're kind of the same. But if I play C and A minor, you've got an extra note there. You've got four notes in total. So if I've got C here and A minor, the A minor has a C and an E in it, which I could actually put below the A. So, so A minor could be this. But C major is that. So if I combine them, I get a different flavour. Likewise, if your bass player is playing a C, you could have a C major chord. But if the bass player goes to an A, you've got A minor but with a note that you've borrowed from C major. So it just gives you a bit more flavoring. So in terms of guitar, if I have C, an open C shape like that, I could actually turn the G in that C chord into an A, like that. Now, because I've turned the G into an A, there's no G anymore because everything else is C's and E's. But if I put my last finger on the first string, I get that, I get my four different notes. On guitar, because there's six strings, you're actually only ever playing three different notes. And it's important to realize that a C and a C A C is a C is a C is a C. So actually, when you're doing a guitar chord, you've got only three different notes there. An E, another one there, another one there, two Cs, and a G. So it's three different notes. Now, this pairing, the C and A minor, also, if you have chord four, which was F, 
the relative minor of that is D minor, which is chord two. And then we have a G major, which is chord five, and we get chord three, which is E minor. So each of those major chords has got a relative minor, which is all within that one scale. So if you're playing in one scale, C major, which is all white notes on the piano, it's quite handy to have a little bit of keyboard knowledge here as well. And you don't need to be a lightning keyboard player, but you have music theory as a diagram here. So we've got C, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. So if I have C in, the, in my guitar here, there's my A minor chord, my relative minor. If I have G, I can have an E minor chord. And then if I have F, I can have a D minor chord, and those fit really nicely together. Likewise, if I have an E minor here, I could swap between the two parts. Now, this is really handy when it comes to production. If I have an E minor chord, for example, on one guitar part, I could have a G major chord as well. And then it depends what the bass note is there, because if this is E minor, your bass player's got an E, but it could be G major. Slightly out of tune, that'll do it on the piano. You have a G in the bass. Now what actually happens to, a, if I have a, a C major chord with an A minor, the component added, I end up with a chord called C6. The same thing happens with F, that's F6, and G, I have G6. And if I was to think of this as A minor now, I have an A minor 7, a D minor 7, and an E minor 7, like that. So I've got minor 7s and 6 chords, so you can already t sort of hear that the complexity of these chords it's just built up from an extra note. This is really handy, and actually it leads on to other things as well. Now, if we have C here, with my A minor component added, with any major chord, I could add the second note. That's pretty handy. Now, this is actually called a major pentatonic. is one of the oldest scales known, and you can actually make a chord out of those. So there's actually masses you can do with just those notes of that scale. Likewise, F. There's my F6, or the D minor mixed in with my F because they're a relative pair. I could add the G, I could add the second note of that particular chord. And likewise for G. Now if I was to turn this on its head a little bit and have E minor with my D, which is my in, in the uh, relative major chord of G, I could still add that same note, and this time I get the fourth in a minor. That's pretty nice. That's, that's standard supermarket E minor. That's kind of the taste of the difference where you're paying a bit more. And then you get Fortnum and Mason E minor. Hmm, yes. So on guitar, you've only got six strings, but actually you can still play quite a few of those notes. If I have E minor like this, standard E minor, I could do something like this. All the components are there, they're just spread out slightly. So we've got E, B, E, A, which is your fourth, D, which is the seventh, and then your minor third. So if I've got this, 
kind of an expensive version of this. All of these notes come from that one scale. Every single note there, there's no sort of extras or no sort of alterations made. You're just combining those notes for your major scale. So arguably you could have a chord that does this. But it wouldn't sound very nice. C is C, E and G. There's my second note. There's the sixth, which was my A minor. Remember the A minor being the pair of C major, the relative minor. And then I could add the seventh note there. That's C. It's a pretty strong version of C. But you can see that you can put some put this into sort of production where you have the piano part that maybe does this. So there's no C major in that at all. I've got my C chord down here and I've got my extra notes here. So if I do a C. C major. So you can get away from just the three notes and start adding more stuff. And there we are. It's just major scale chords built upon that scale.